I could feel the heat, and it was tremendous. Right. There's smoke down to the floor. Oh, I can't see nothing. You can't see a thing. My initial emotion was fear, and it's like you're in an oven. And then the call came in. 4559. I could feel the heat through my face mask. I could feel it on my neck. You know, debris falling and all that kind of thing going on. I knew this was the real deal. This was a fire. It runs, it hides from you just like a person. You're trying to find a victim. You're trying to find the seat of the fire. You want to shy away from it. You want to see. You want to see what's creating this kind of heat as it, it moves around you. I do believe it is alive. This is a war. It's us against it. We interrupt our regularly scheduled program for this uh, news bulletin. A major brush fire has erupted in the Oakland Hills. Firefighters on the scene that the situation is, quote, totally out of control. What started as a relatively small grass fire jumped highways and treetops, devouring anything and everything in its path. Oakland, California. A firestorm rages through the hills destroying nearly 3,000 homes. The fire claims 25 lives. One of the victims is a firefighter. Five years later, a call went out to hire new firefighters. Oakland wanted to build a force that would reflect the makeup of the city, one of the most ethnically diverse in the country. Like many cities, Oakland has faced battles over who gets to become a firefighter. Today, as Oakland rebuilds its department, who wins and who loses? And will these firefighters learn to trust each other with their lives? Major funding for Test of Courage was provided by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting and the John D. and Catherine T. MacArthur Foundation. Additional funding was provided by the Puffin Foundation. If you need a job, there is no better job than firefighting. It does not exist. And I know that because I challenge you to find somebody that left firefighting for a better job. In early 1996, the Oakland Fire Department announced openings for 50 new firefighters. Nearly 5,000 people applied. To get on the eligible list, there are three parts, which is a written examination, a physical agility examination, and then also we have an oral board. But following that, we have a background investigation, and then we have a psychological suitability assessment. There's a chief's interview and also a medical examination. The city sponsored preparation courses to improve test skills for the written, physical, and oral exams. The classes were made available to all applicants. Okay, if I can have your attention, my name's Coach Tapscott. Ah, some of you have heard of me, huh? I hope it's good. I understand right now there are 50 jobs available. Hello? Did you hear what I just said? There are 50 jobs waiting for people to occupy. We're going to go through a simulated course, uh, and we're going to try and attempt to time them. So we're going to be staggering them to go out with the tanks and the coats on, and they will actually go through the agility test today. Let's go. We got to get that this speed work here. Let's go. Come on. Keep the shoulders rolling. Keep the shoulders rolling. Come on. You got it. Come on. Come on. Come on. Get the knees up. Get the knees up. Get the knees up. I can't do it. Yes, you can. Yes, don't say can't. Move it. Come on. 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 Should be able to get it. I remember that first day that the walls were out and all those tall guys were out there. We'd watch the guys. They would just bunny hop over the wall, no problem. 
Now on the women, I mean, it would just take all the women, all of these tries. So yeah, I was, I think I was a little intimidated, but at the same time, I was determined because I knew it was something that I really wanted to do. Couple of challenges today, huh? <laughs> yeah, the wall, but I'm gonna get that wall because I've done that wall, I can do that wall. I think I finally figured out, gee, you know, there's more to life than just having a job that's just a job uh, and going after a career that is so much of a representation of who I am. I just have to do it. I want this career, and I have all my teammates rooting for me. And we're all in this together as a team. So I'm not letting them down, and I'm not letting myself down. When I initially went to San Francisco State, going into college at 18, thinking, okay, go for the money, go, you know, business, advertising, all that, and just I, the closer I got to that, the more I didn't like it, and the more I really didn't want to go in that direction. I've been waiting for Oakland to test for a long time. I'm getting married next August. If I got hired here, it would be the perfect time. Do you want some coffee? Oh, no, thank you. No, no. Can I get it for you? Um, My dad once said, you know, why don't you consider being a firefighter, man? It's a good job. And I'm like, man, are you crazy? But, you know, secretly, I, uh, it did appeal to me. Um, but I wanted to do the music thing. <laughs> Bootsy Collins in Japan, you know, hung out with Ice Cube in a small little club in Tokyo. It's great. I wouldn't trade it for the world, but there's more. There's more than just playing. There's more to life than that. should have their identification and their blue admittance card. Of the nearly 5,000 people who applied, 3,400 showed up for the first exam. When I'm looking at it, I can't believe it's like, all right, I got this, I got this. And I'm just like looking over the test 150 times to make sure I didn't do anything stupid. That's what's going to kill me, you know, is doing something stupid. So how did it go? Um, it was a challenge, uh, but it was a little less difficult than I thought it was going to be. So I'm really relieved. Oops. I've tested everywhere from um, uh, Beverly Hills to Seattle, Washington. The firefighters I talk to say, you know, well, you're not going to get hired. You're <laughs> you're a white male, so you know, good luck. Yes, I am. I am Hispanic, but. I'm not relying on getting hired because um, I'm a minority. Common divisor and it's just, um, it's just I'm doing the same thing as everybody else. I'm going to college, I'm taking all the right fire classes that needs to be taken. I'm taking all my, all my, all my, all my requirements and I'm doing as much as everybody else, if not even more than anybody else. It was affirmative action that got me, you know, into college and you know, we still live in a society of, you know, that's not on an even playing field for women, for minorities. It's just not, just is not. And now, I sometimes feel I'm on the other side of the coin, you know, because I'm not a woman. Oh, uh, yeah. Nine days after the written Bill, test, Bill. the candidates got their results. Boom. Boom. You're among the candidates who have passed this hurdle and are being invited back to the next stage. Boom. Hello. I'm in there. I'm in there. That's right. We got our notices today. We're waiting for the rest of the team to get here so we can open our envelopes. A lot of tension had mm -hmm. built up, and we were able to come together, still as a group, staying as a group, 
and relieve some of that tension. Oh, Wait, standing? let's hold hands. Let's hold oh, hands. Oh, no. The yeah, pressure's on. Hold hands. <laughs> Amen. Let's open them. Amen. I can't do Wait. it. Wait. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, my God. Where's the letter from? Right here. <laughs> 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 Come on. Yeah. Okay, well, here we go. Oh, gosh. That was really, really, really a heartbreaker um, because that could have been another one of us or any one of us um, that didn't pass. And it was very heartbreaking because she has wanted to be a firefighter for a very long time, uh, a lot longer than I have, and she worked just as hard as any of the rest of us did. Oakland will be hiring in two more years, so have to be ready. Still take the classes. So can't give up. You just have to keep going. Pam was one of nearly a thousand who were eliminated with the written exam. From here, the remaining 2,400 will go to the next step, the physical agility test. There was um, a guy from the 51st Street Station. He suspects that after the physical test, they'll drop about another thousand. He's amazed at how much time is given for the test. Because when he did it, I guess it was like 14 minutes, but now it's 17.55. I guess they want more, more lady friends in there, which is a good thing, I guess. This job is not for everybody. You know, everybody doesn't have the ability to be a firefighter. However, anybody who wants to be a firefighter should have that opportunity. Dad, you want me to, um, you want me to put this together or yeah. put on the side? These, I don't think I ever did one of these before. I was planning to become a body painter, collision repair. I don't really want to do that for the rest of my life. You know, I, I want to be someone, something better. I just have to be really quick, you know, when, whenever my dad tells me to do something, I gotta be on the ball, and um, I think that, that, that'll help me out tremendously. In the, in the fire department, I'm gonna, if there's a fire, I'm going to be constantly on my feet, having to react at just a split second. So, um, yeah, every, everything I learn here, I'm, I'm gonna take it with me to the fire department. Okay, take off, let's go. Ever since Chandra started this process, it's been her life. You know, it's all she talks about, it's all she thinks about, it's all she does, is focus on passing these different tests. It probably was seeing a woman in that career, a minority woman, that, that was the final push. Too, didn't you? <laughs> Proud of you, baby. Proud of you. you did it, girl! Chandra, Brendan, Frank, and Terry all passed the physical agility test. Was I worried? As role models, we have neighborhood functions with my crew, 
also have fire evacuation meetings with the tenants, and also earthquake safety preparedness. For I have a great tolerance for stress. I believe in cleanliness. Candidate number five. The applicant pool is now down to about 1,900. The next step is the oral interviews. In addition to the city-sponsored courses, firefighters also donated their time to hold practice interviews for the candidates. Um, why do you believe you would be a good firefighter? I would be a good firefighter because I'm definitely a people person. Candidate number six. Up to this point, the written and physical exams have been pass or fail. But now, only the oral interviews will determine whether or not they'll be eligible to enter the Firefighters Academy. Um, also, I've taken CPR. The most subjective part of that three-part examination process is the oral interview. We realize this. We, when I say we, the Oakland Black Firefighters Association realize this. So what we targeted was the oral interview process. And how do we make that more minority and women friendly. And it came right down to the makeup of your oral board. And it's the interview whether, you know, that's going to get you the job. I mean, your application could look great. Your, you know, written, app, your written test was awesome. Your physical test, you're in shape, great. You know, who are you though? Kill the number of <laughs> Gladly. <laughs> Good luck. All right. Straight out that Thanks way. Thanks a lot. Sure. <laughs> wow. <laughs> it's over. It went really well. I spoke clearly and uh, smiled a lot and joked here and there where I could and uh, firm handshakes and make sure, made sure I made eye, eye contact with all three. There were three. Out of 895 candidates who passed the oral interviews, Frank scores in the top 100. This brings him one step closer. Come on, Bear, you can do it. But over the next few months, he'll face yet another series of exams and interviews. Probably the most lasting impression I'll uh, have of the whole process was uh, walking into the lobby <laughs> of the building and seeing all of these people in their suits the, and they're all there for the same thing and you're trying at that point tell yourself you know you're better than that you know you're you're going to do better which kind of goes against the, the spirit of the job in a way you know it's like you don't want to wish any ill on anyone you know you want everybody to do well right but I really want the job. <laughs> so I'm better than that person and this, that, and the other. Terry scores less than one point away from the top 100. He's on the eligibility list, but out of contention for the first academy class. Chandra did not make the eligibility list. For now, she continues her job as a social worker. It definitely meant more to me than any interview I've ever been on in my life. I'm 5'1", so I'm considered a short person. Two people that were on my board were well over six feet tall, and I can just imagine what they might have thought about little old me coming and dragging one of them out of a fire. This was really an all-male dominated career. And yes, they're trying to change that. And yes, the city of Oakland tried to preach that. But the bottom line is, not all men want to have women in a career that has, you know, was really born an all male um, career. As soon as I realized it was going to be that kind of interview, it just, you know, first panic that sets in the back on, oh God, it's going to be this. And I just knew when I left that there was nothing impressive about my interview. <laughs> Being at the bottom of 895, even if they hire 100 people, that's, I'll be nowhere close to it. So that pretty much ended uh, you know, any chance of, of getting hired there.
What time is your appointment? At 115. 115? Mm-hmm. Wait, what did you already get on me? What is this? Franklin, did you take that off? Let's see, Frank. Let's see. You should put your little... No, no, that wouldn't look good. Maybe you should have had your jacket off while you ate. Okay, mm -hmm. come here. Because that's dark. It's coming out. You look good. You look handsome. Make sure you say a little prayer before you go. Oh, yeah. I, I, I have a little thing with me um, about Just firefighters. Take a That's few blessed. minutes. Yeah. yeah. Okay, Frankie. Okay, I'll mama. be waiting for you to get home. I'm waiting for that call. Are we getting the Chronicle now? Yeah, we know we have one. Oh. Okay, man. All right, honey. No, I'll be okay. back to start our future. Yeah, that's for sure. Huh? Don't worry, okay? okay? Don't think about that spot either. No, no, that's no. all I'm thinking about. <laughs> okay. okay, I call Terry John. Frank is among the top 28 who are selected for the first fire academy. There is a chain of command here. If you have a problem, once we've divided you up in the squads, you go to your squad leader. It'll be we tried to start it out as much like a basic training experience in the military as we could. We then try to strip them all down and build them up the open way. What goes here stays here. I don't want you guys taking it back and saying, oh, you know, yeah, there's this one guy in my group, he's the dead, you know, I, I don't want any of that stuff. And if I hear about that, I'm going to come down on you with my few shoes. The ladder coming down! Everyone's eyes are on us. How well are we going to do? Are we going to be able to handle the pressure? And the big one is always, if, if a fellow firefighter goes down, are you going to be able to pull them out? Can everyone hear me? Yes. I can't hear you. Yes, yes ma'am. Who does not have their safety gear, all of their safety gear? I have no, really no direction up until, until uh, my friend introduced me to the fire service and then it's like, I fell in love. It's just like your first love, you know, you, I just fell in love and I, I didn't want to do anything else but trying to get into the fire department. What got me interested? Well, I'll tell you, it's a story. Um, I lost my house to fire when I was um, in the first grade and I remember coming home from school, um, to our home fully engulfed. And I have uh, my youngest sister, who has cerebral palsy. She was still inside the house, but the house was about to go when the, the fire captain refused to send someone in. And um, my stepfather, at the time, worked across the street. He came over, saw what was going on, and he said if they wet him down, he would be willing to go in and get my little sister out. So they wet him down, he went in and brought her out, and my mother eventually married him. You know, there's a lot of talk about valuing diversity, city of Oakland, representing the community. All that is very positive stuff. However, when we get to the fire line, I want people who know exactly what is expected and basically fall into lockstep in providing that. So you're going to repeat after me, the city of Oakland, the city of Oakland is, committed is committed to the delivery, to the delivery of, effective of effective, courteous, courteous and responsive, and responsive services. services. God, I hope I pass the test. God, I hope I pass the test. Go to work. All right. Go, right. dude. Good luck, everybody. Thank you, 25 of the toughest questions you're ever going to have. For 16 grueling weeks, the recruits will be trained in everything from firehouse chores to saving lives. We need to test them. We need to see how they handle pressure because that's part of this job. I want people who are going to drag hose the same way, make couplings the same way, throw ladders the same way, ventilate a building the same way. I want you to take the second floor. Break it down. You're not going to check. Break it down. Yes, sir. Is that how you want the clove hitch? Excuse me, sir. How did we teach you to tie the clove hitch? All I'm saying is when you tie it, if you're coming off to the bottom half hitch, and the load's going away, it basically kind of pinches down on the knife. Oh, and it cinches it down. Oh, That's right. You're right. So. Over your head! Uh, approximately 80% of the calls um, that Oakland uh, Fire Department responds to are medical-related. We have an accident over here. We need you to respond. 
2552. I was working at Eden Hospital here in Castro Valley in the emergency trauma department. And before that, I was a soldier for the United States Army. Hey, sir, can you hear me? It's been exposed. Okay, man, let's move him your way one more time. Get a high plan. Come on, we're wasting time. We need to get a plan here. We're taking too much time here. These are trauma victims. We've got good pulses all around. Still unconscious. Possible, possible fracture to the right leg. Four. Okay, rotate. Okay, rotate. Five. What was the mechanism of injury? It was a fall. Okay, that's what I need to know. That's what happened. Well, that's important. That's crucial. Give me a report. Approximately a 24-year-old male who fell from a, a trauma, trauma to secondary to a scaffolding fall. Keep your head still for me. What's your name? Well, I became a paramedic to gain some experience with the ultimate goal being that I wanted to be a firefighter. For me, the most difficult part of the academy is uh, it's definitely the physical. My brothers who I played sports with think it's awesome. My sisters kind of looked at me funny and said, what do you want to do that for? <laughs> and then once I finally decided to do this, it took me four years four years of testing to get the job. You may have a green top hydrant, but with a red cap. Uh, so you're getting plenty of water, no, no, no PSI. Pressure. By and large, you looked OK. You saw this morning how we kind of took it easy and had some fun. To heck with fun. Fun is out now, because I realized that some, for some reason, you think that means you can come out here and have fun. Lots of little mistakes have creeped into this act that need to be eradicated. I really honestly think my 12-year-old son could, could capture this and retain it. I'm like, here's your nozzle, and then somebody was like, bet you. You go, Betsy. It's a reverse, right? And then he threw me off because I didn't think I was doing it right. No, no, no. I was asking, what evolution are you doing? No, you I said, said Betsy, it's a reverse. And that made me think like, no, I oh. You misunderstood me. I said, Betsy, what are you guys doing? Are you doing a reverse? OK, no, that's all good. Whatever. I that got a down. suggestion. No, I you know, I got a suggestion when, when we're all doing our lines. Nobody, you know, we shouldn't say anything until it's done. Well, dog, I said that because you were lost. No, 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 I understand. I said that because you were lost. <laughs> dog, dog, I, I understand yeah, totally. But if I'm lost, and if anybody's lost, you know, let's just stay lost or let us think about it. We might recover. But, you know, I don't know. You're right, Carl. It's better that way. But we recover right. our own mistakes right, and exactly. move on. You're going to hear multiple orders that if you're out at a fire, there could be another engine company, and you might hear someone else say four days. So you need to know in your right. head what you're doing. Don't, that, don't throw exactly. me off. That ain't happening. You need, to, you need to know what you're doing. What are you doing? Yes, okay. I was doing no, you was having it here. But yeah, this fire academy is, 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 is intense. It's hard sometimes when they come in and they say, oh, some people are on the bubble, you know, and you don't want to lose anybody. So if there's people that are having trouble in certain areas, then we have to gel together as a team and we have to pull them through it because we all have the same common goal. That common goal is March 6th. And March 6th, 28 people are going to be there. Almost done. Almost done. <laughs> Hey guys, hey guys, are we going to study at someone's home or are we going to go to the study place with the no, Red Cross? we're going to Fahey's house, man. Okay. Oh, we're going to Fahey's house. Let's go to Fahey's house. Hey, does anybody study. have any more of these? Great. Are these booklets? Right now, brother, we're trying to decide where we're we going to study tonight. <laughs> well, brother, how about we go study at your house? Well, brother, we can't do that no, because, because I, I have in Section 8 housing and it's not safe. <laughs> However, well, we brother, can go I live close to Section 8 housing hey, and hey, it's about the same thing. OK, brother. That's okay, fine. Brother. All right. Once yeah. again, we peaceably agree. Yeah. Well, there's no peace tomorrow, boy. I see people migrating towards others that they're familiar with. All right, I did my first It's just natural. It just happens. People have made friends with, with various people that they feel most comfortable with. I think the hurdle is, is to just walk out of your own comfortable group and mix and get to know who other people are. How many, how far apart are they? Uh, that is not in here. Crush load. You have this. I got the strainer right here. Yeah. Six pack anymore. If I want a six pack, oh, perfect. Like this. It's fantastic. It's the best. He needs to start his own cooking show. George can cook. Get to the stairs, open that door. Yeah, this is good.
gonna, this is a, a great drill right here. This is one of the most difficult things to do with a, a primary search member of the truck company crawling in, searching for down victims, no hose lines, in the smoke, you can't see, totally blind, uh, just by feel. I want the 40, I want you to throw it to the left-hand window, the one just... Okay, put it on straight in front. It's a lot of chaos, and sometimes you don't exactly know how to help or what to do when you want to help. They're making the classic mistakes. Hey, hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it. Get down, get down. Don't go standing up like that. We're trusting each other with our lives, so it's important that we get the fundamentals down here so that Sean can trust me and I can trust Sean once we do get into the field. Just knowing that George's life is in my hands is enough pressure. And I just don't want to stumble or trip or anything like that. I want to. I want to make sure he gets home. You know. If I flunk this final, where am I going to be? Am I going to test again? Hello, welcome to Russian Healthy. What can I get you today? And I'm thinking, okay, what about my parent? What about my little brother? Who's going to take care of them? You know. I'm pretty much the head household of the family I mean I my longtime goal is like to buy them a house so they could you know a place to stay where they could call home you know you can't be American unless you have a home or something you own you know we have in our hands the test this is the final exam for you guys all you can really do here is hurt your seniority or possibly hurt your chances of this job the couple people in this room that could possibly still be on the bubble this might push you over the edge if you drop the ball on this bad enough. OK, ladies and gentlemen, good luck. You're allowed to now turn over your papers. Well, after today's examination, I might want to be looking for a security uniform. <laughs> yep, perfect. Oh, we got it. Are, perfect. We will yes, thoroughly sir. prepare. Perfect. Look good? Yeah. yeah. Except, for this little, except for this little strap right here. How am I looking? You look bad. Looking good. Do I look official? You look official. So when do you want your Chiefs bugles uh, put aside for you? Uh, maybe in about, what, about eight months? OK. Oh. No problem. Ooh. You better strike strike that for me. <laughs> <laughs> we got our shirts, uniform shirts. And then I got my dad's helmet over here also. My father was a firefighter, so I grew up around it. My father used to make me do a lot of things I didn't really want to do. Um, you know, getting up early on the weekends when I was really young, go to work with him. And now looking back, you know, all the things he made me go do that I wasn't very happy with have helped me out in the long run. During the summer of 1996, nearly two years ago, over 14,000 applications were handed out. Today, from our academy, we are graduating the top 28 out of 14,000 applications. Quite an accomplishment. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and families of our newest firefighters. On behalf of the men and women of the Oakland Fire Service Agency, I welcome you to this graduation ceremonies of the Recruit Class 197. Good afternoon. I'm Firefighter Sean Gasset. Doesn't that sound good? <laughs> it's been a long time. <laughs> it's an extreme honor and privilege today to stand before you on behalf of Class of 197 and representing the Oakland Fire Services Agency. I'd like to thank you all for coming. George Freeland.
Frank T.G. Boy. Bao To. Tina Moore. This, this is the number one recruit, scored number one in the class of 28. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you the firefighters of recruit class 197. see a person getting shot close up this guy got shot in the head and and uh, we were trying to do CPR and I got a little shell shock at first but you know I took a breath and then just do what, exactly what I was trained to do we were also responding to a drive-by shooting and um, PD had to take some time to secure the scene some people were actually interfering with what we were trying to do um, lots of obscenities and profanities being yelled your way. You gotta block it out even though the hair on the back of your neck kind of stands up. Oh, 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 the rookie firefighters will spend a total of 18 months on probation. 100%. All right, 150. During this time, they'll work 24-hour shifts at different firehouses across the city. Go ahead and let him take your sleeve out. He wants to check your pulse, okay? There you go. There That's you good. Go. Great. Thank you. Thank you. We have to kind of be like a family here. I mean, this is our second family because everybody have a different way of thinking, different way of acting, and even come down to food. Right down the middle. Ooh. We share a common sleeping place. And you know, so you get to see what people look like three o'clock in the morning, mm -hmm. trying to focus, trying to do good. To me, it's a rush. I go to fire and I'm just so pumped up. There we go. When I get off of that engine and I see smoke and I'm gonna go inside, I don't think of, oh, you know, this is dangerous. No, I think it is going inside. Let's kick the door down, let's have some fun. The calls that I remember the most are the fires. The fires are just incredibly challenging and physically strenuous and adrenaline rush the whole way. Seriously, this is the only job that I, I really look forward to going to work. Hello? Hey! Fire department. What? Down. What's going on with him, Val? Um, he, uh, he got, he was, he blacked out in fall. But I'm trying to get his medical condition. Oh, I'm looking out. Yeah, but nothing for oh. you. Know, I just had two weeks vacation and I was dying because I want to go back to work to interact with all the other firefighters, to, to go out there and interact with the community. Actually, I went on this one call where, the, where it was a car fire and this two Vietnamese guy doesn't speak English and they, didn't, well, they were kind of hesitant for us to put out the fire because they didn't want to pay for it. So I told him, hey, don't worry about it. It's free with a fire department. So that was kind of nice, you know I mean? That was, it made me feel good because I could 
actually communicate with them. Do you want to follow her? Do follow you and get one flung. The reason I got the restaurant is for my mom, my little brother. Before my dad passed away, he was he was really happy. He was ecstatic that you know I, that I got hired. All righty, the noodles done. <laughs> Almighty God, protector of all mankind, your strength, power, and wisdom are a beacon of light to all men. Special guidance to firemen and firefighters so that our life has changed a lot. He, of course, is making more money now. Makes it a lot easier. He's less stressed. I mean, he was always worried about if he was going to be able to, you know, afford the wedding, for the car payments, and everything. He always took everything on himself. Good choice, Frankie. I didn't pick it. You have to have someone who's understanding, someone who's going to be there for you, because there's going to be some down points on this job. What we really don't know about and don't learn until you start working in a job is that because we put a lot of hours at night, we, have, we deal with uh, sleep deprivation quite a bit. <laughs> Through years, you, uh, you come home, you're tired, and you start to shut out the family. You, you're quick to get angry about trivial things. And uh, after a number of years of this kind of attitude, it kind of wears and tears in a family. It's just like the captain said, you, no one really, unless you're a firefighter, no one can really understand what, what we do. We have a special relationship. We have to um, live for 24 hours together. You know, it's not like an eight-hour day where you can put on a fake thing for you know, eight hours and you go home. Here, this is our home. 24 hours away from your family is tough. That's probably one of the biggest sacrifices that you have to make as a firefighter is the time. My ex-wife could not handle me being a firefighter, and hence we're separated because of that. Um, that was a big sacrifice. He would come home and tell me in each call exactly how it went. And then he had an accident where um, I believe there was a child involved, and he got so upset about it. and. I told him, you just can't talk about this anymore. If you want to talk about it with me later on, that's fine. But I'm just hoping that he can vent it out with his, um, his other people at work, or the other firefighters, and just leave it there. Don't no, ask. My fault. My bad. I think that various houses have various personalities. And we tend to gravitate more towards the house that we feel most comfortable with. Myself, I feel much easier being at certain houses than I do at others. Many women haven't had a chance to work with men in a, in a man's working environment, don't quite understand what is going on, and would interpret uh, practical joking and uh, innocent hazing as uh, a hostile environment. <laughs> but you know what I didn't notice on your car today? Uh, a parking ticket. <laughs> <laughs> the hazing I see now, hazing is a misnomer. I think it's appropriate what's going on now. It's good natured by and large. Um, it's testing though, and how a person reacts to it speaks a lot to how they're going to handle stress, how they're going to handle the runs, how they're going to handle having um, fellow, having co-workers die on the job. I got stirred. Let jingle jangle. Okay, now listen. If you can figure this middle out, Heather. Arnold Schwarzenegger has a big one. Yeah, look at me when I'm talking to you. Michael J. Fox has a little one. Think about that. Okay. Okay, the Pope doesn't have one. Don't get that part. Go on. <laughs> and Lucy never used a Ricky. We gotta put these in I can see you're not going to get it. Brain! No, I thought about brain. Well, didn't he have a brain? The Pope has a brain. Oh. OK, what? what the Pope it? doesn't have one? The Pope's a man, right? Yeah. Last name. Yeah. The Pope's a man. <laughs> the last name. Last name. Dude, we just left on the run. What have you two been doing? Modeling in the mirror? And the jokes and the, the razzing and everything. That's, if you get a lot of it, they like you. And I've gotten a lot, so I mean, you're doing okay. It's when they don't, when they don't joke with you and they don't razz you, then 
that's when you need to kind of look over your shoulder. Maybe you're not doing something right. You're supposed to put the ball down before you run with it. These are all of our rooms. This is my room. <laughs> Not much of one, but it suits the purpose. This is the uh, women's bathroom while I'm here. We have the sign that says women's. When I'm gone, the next shift turns it over because they don't have any women on their shift. So, B shift, this place is mine. It's a job, it's a profession, and merit plays a huge role in that. If I perform, then I'm respected because everyone is counting on everyone else. It's such a teamwork environment. And that if I don't perform, then someone else has to pick up the pace behind me. When women came into the fire service, they had a, a, a lot of problems with uh, the, the male firefighters, uh, both black and white. And well, one of the reasons is that, for some reason or other, uh, males didn't think that this was a job for women. They felt that uh, they shouldn't be here. And some people said that uh, uh, it's against their religion. Well. This job has nothing to do with religion. If your religion don't want you to work with uh, uh, females, then you better look for another job. Water flow questions are on there, Dave. Thank you very much for last I time. really don't have a problem with female firefighters. The scenario that most people worry about is if I'm in danger or if I'm down, are you going to be able to pull me out? A lot of women that I've worked with are smart enough to know that if they can't pull you out, they're going to either tie a rope to you and get two other people to help them, or they're going to get help for you. And the biggest thing that I have with anybody coming to a job like this is if you can't perform to the standards, don't do it. Don't ask them to change the standards for you. Hello? Hello, fire department. And you're experiencing no pain nowhere. To me, affirmative action can be a very, very positive um, and beneficial tool if it's used properly, if, it, if it's used how it was meant to be used, and that is, it was never designed to give unqualified people opportunity. It was designed, however, to make sure that qualified people were not excluded. I've been on so many different kinds of calls where there were times when the male firefighters were grateful that I was there because the patient was a woman hemorrhaging with no clothes on, and it's just easier to send a woman in to take care of that. And I've also been on calls where domestic violence is going on, police aren't on the scene, and there's a big 300-pound guy, very angry, and I'm very grateful that there's a big 300-pound firefighter standing next to me. Requesting an uh, AMR for a firefighter with third-degree burn. It's all AMR. Yeah, they're right. Hey, uh, go through command. Tell command we need an ambulance for a BLS burn. You leave a little piece of yourself behind at every fire you go to. You know, maybe you twist your ankle. Maybe you breathe a little bit of smoke. Maybe you see some horrific fire fatality. 45, every Every fire you go to, you're you know, beating yourself up or, or hurting yourself, diminishing yourself in the long run. On January 10th, 1999, a fire broke out in a two-story building near downtown Oakland. Within an hour, 70 firefighters were on the scene. Then, tragedy struck. The second floor collapsed, trapping four firefighters inside. We were second on scene at the fire. Our instructions were to go around back, so therefore we were up on the roof when it collapsed. Three firefighters were badly injured. Veteran firefighter Tracy Toomey was killed. You're just kind of standing there hanging in the balance. I mean, when they're pulling these guys out and you're seeing them pulled away, it hit home. 545 out of service, medical emergency. The entire department mourned the loss of one of their own.
My initial reaction was just sadness, pain, as was the initial reaction of every member of our fire family. It all hit home when I saw the casket. This is a brother, and we'll never see him again. We're here to pay respect to a husband, a father, and a friend. We're here to try to make sense of a loss of a firefighter, an old-fashioned fireman. Nearly 7,000 firefighters from throughout the state attended the funeral service to pay their respects to a fallen brother. Renee Toomey was presented with her husband's Medal of Honor. Tracy Dolan Toomey was born January 1st, 1947, in Oakland, California. He grew up in a proud working class neighborhood, graduated from Castlemont High School in 1964, and he enrolled in Laney Junior College. You never think that when you leave home that morning, that that could be your last day coming home. And when you think of it, you know, it's, it's, it's really sad, and it hurts your heart. Frank could have been working that day. Uh, he almost was working that day. And I never really thought about, you know, the whole danger part of it. I really just thought, this is his dream. I'm just so happy he's there. And um, I took it really hard. What hits home in that particular scenario, dealing with Dracy Toomey, um, he, who was killed while working on this particular firehouse, um, was a feeling of helplessness, not being able to help, you know, your, your buddy. I have a different perspective on death now, I think, just from this job. Because we see so much death and we hear about death around us that it makes me more conscious of the fact that our life is, is uh, temporary. And for everyone, not just myself being a firefighter, but for everyone, that we should live our lives every day because it might be our last. Okay, put your hands on the steering wheel. Okay. Okay, hands on the steering wheel. Ready? Let's go. There's moments during the day when we're in a rig and I have the Oakland Fire shirt on and some little kid comes up to me and says, are you a firefighter? And I say, yeah, I'm a firefighter. And then we have a women's bathroom over here too. Okay. Oh. Thanks a lot, guys. See you later. Bye. Bye. It, it was important to me to be somebody that had a little bit of importance. It would be nice to be the hero or that person that you perceive a firefighter to be. I mean, it's not always fun. It's not always, you know, high glory and clean like we are right now. But I like it. Not only are we heroes, and people talk about firefighters being heroes all the time, but more importantly than being heroes, we need to be role models. And so when we look out in the community and we see the children of different ethnicities, both genders, who one day say, well, I want to be a firefighter, it makes that dream more of a reality if they can see somebody on the back of that fire engine who looks like them. I remember the first day coming into the drill town and look on the wall, all the pictures on the wall were white males. Um, 
and that was how it was then. But, I mean, that's just no different from, you know, America in general. But, but the important thing is that we show signs of change. Major funding for Test of Courage was provided by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting and the John D. and Catherine T. MacArthur Foundation. Additional funding was provided by the Puffin Foundation. <laughs>